Hi, I'm Darren Cox, 2017 Feeder Masters Champion. I'm here today just to go through some of our real key favourite tips on feeder fishing. There's just, just a few things like the basic principles, but really, really important things that I try and follow when I'm feeder fishing. It's changed a lot over the years, and one of the things that I believe is really important is years ago we used to fish, we used to put a bed of feed down. We used to sit there and wait for the bream to come along, wait for the skimmers to come along. It's a fact, there's more bream, more skimmers about anywhere now, everywhere. The rivers are full of them, the lakes are full of them. What I use, to firmly believe in, and I've used one for years and years, used for bream fishing, for carp fishing, for, for, for all my feeder fishing, is a stopwatch. It just helps me, when I'm sitting there, I could think about whatever I need to think about when I'm fishing. Think about what hook bait to use, what, what to do, how fast to chuck it out. This tells me how long I've left it in. I don't have to think about, oh, I've left it in long enough now. That tells me, if I get a bite in three minutes, I'm expecting a bite next chuck in three minutes. I might not get one, but after a while, it'll give me a pattern, and I'll form a pattern. So I don't need to leave my, my feeder in too much longer after what I call the killing time. If my bites are coming in four minutes, I reel in in five minutes and that maximises your time in the, in, in the water and it also means that you're feeding properly. One of the other key tips for me is how you actually start the session off. I always use an ounce or an ounce and a half bomb. I tend to use an ounce bomb over most medium to short distances and then an ounce and a half bomb if I want to go any further. It's about mapping what is underneath the water. It's about understanding what depth you've got. It doesn't just help you on the day, but it helps you form an idea, especially if you're fishing festivals, if you're fishing one day after another. Like, like on the, the Feeder Masters, um, I had to try and find depth that the fish were feeding at. It doesn't matter whether the skimmers, roach, bream, wh whatever, if you can find that key depth, where you can get those bites. Sometimes you go around the other side of the lake, if you find that key depth again, then you're, you, you're at an advantage. You, you're immediately ahead of everybody else because you're understanding what's going on. All I do, put it on without hook and thumb and just cast out, cast out where, where I believe that I, I need to cast. But I just count one and two and three and and it sounds really simple I know but you've got to count two things you've got to use the same bomb you've got to count the same way that will give you an idea now it doesn't matter if your bomb goes down in 14 seconds and it's 26 foot or 14 seconds and it's 30 foot but in your mind as long as you know a count of your 14 is the right place to be and that's what it was at Bow Beach then that's what I stick to one of the other things key things for me is particles. Particles are so important. Dead maggots, love them. Dead pinkies, casters, chopped worms. I mince my worms up, right? You, you, can, you can force a lot of bait through your feed, but, uh, through your feeder, but there's no point actually putting lots and lots of particles in until you start to get signs. If you load your peg up too much at the start, you may miss those early fish. If you're just fishing three or four bream, you can put some bait in and leave it alone. But if you're talking about building a peg, catching skimmers, like fish like that I just caught then, that's what you want to be doing. Just start to put the bait in and ease the bait in as you're going along. That brings me on to my, my next tip, which is feeders. There's tons of different styles of feeders on the market these days. And for me, the two key ones are like basically a front loaded cage feeder. These cast really, really well. They release the bait very, very quickly. When, they hit, when it hits the bottom, it releases instantly. What this does do is it, it, it will form a trail on the way down. And sometimes in clear water or in cold water, sometimes you just want a bit of bait falling down. These bream and skimmers often leave, live this far off the bottom. When they live that far off the bottom, if you're just dropping a, a heavy feeder with no bait coming off it whatsoever, then they're not going to follow it down. These are brilliant, absolutely brilliant for attracting fish into your peg. On the other hand, these window feeders, we've had them for years in all different guises, they're available now exactly as they are, they're perfect. But what these do is they deliver a heck of a lot of bait. So you're getting fish in your peg. If you've got those fish down on the bottom after 
them following your trail off the cage feeder. Get some baiting, ram some baiting, casters, worms, pinkies, dead maggots, whatever you want to do, but get some baiting. This will go down, hit the bottom, release very, very quickly still, but there's loads of bait down there. When you're actually bringing a fish back, bring it in, it's leaving the bait there, so you've got fish already feeding. Just a few, few little tips there I think are really, really important. The last one for me is hook baits. You've got to think about the size of the fish that you're actually going to catch and the size of fish that are in your peg. If your peg's full of little fish, then it's quite obvious you might need to fish with big baits. But if those fish are relatively big, big fish in your peg and then there's not many small fish about, then small particles are absolutely brilliant. Floating maggots, one of the greatest baits, because they actually give your hook, your hook neutral buoyancy. It's more like bait that's wafting off the bottom. Double caster, another great bait. L underrated, because people think because you took a long way the casters might come off. A great bait for catching skimmers and bream. For me, if I need to get a bite, if I need to get a bite then these things, red worms, will get me a bite. Any day of the week they'll get you a bite. Two tiny little red worms on a 16, even a 14, it looks ridiculous, but they get you bites. They wriggle like mad and the fish find them. Superb baits. Then finally, dendrobina. A decent sized dendrobina, top and tailed, hooked up so you've got two pieces on, that will get you a big fish. Really, really great bait to have on the hook. Just use these following these principles, think about them when you're fishing, they will catch you more fish.